What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are at. Welcome to the BitLab Academy Daily Stream. My name is Kelly Kellum, and welcome to the show. Yesterday, of course, we did not have a stream. We had some uh, you know, uh, monthly meeting that we were in, and I, I did record, I pre-recorded a stream, and it took, uh, you know, I uploaded it about 9.15, 9.30 a.m., uh, and it still still hadn't even uh, finished processing at like 2 p.m., so I just uh, decided to cancel it because some of the data that I was going to be talking about was going to be a little aged already. So I wanted to just uh, sort of similar similar stream today. That's why you see the sa same thumbnail that we didn't use yesterday, which is what's going on at the end of this month. We have a monthly close coming in today, February 28th. Uh, how do we utilize the data that's in the, available in the charts how do we utilize the data and uh, know what's going to go on into March? How do we set some price targets? What are some things we can see? So we're going to be going over a lot of charts today. We're going to be going over Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, uh, XRP, Cardano. I'm going to try and get through quite a number of charts looking at, uh, you know, how they're closing out this month and what we can kind of see going into next month. But before we jump into all that, let's just take a moment here. I just want to shout out, uh, you know, welcome to everybody here in the chat. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Where are you tuned in from? Uh, if this is your first time, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Everybody in the room, hit that like button. Ding the bell. Uh, you know, make sure you get those notifications. And of course, make sure you check out. Uh, bitlabacademy.com and check out all those socials that we have all down here make sure you have the correct ones uh and again my name is kelly kellum so shout out to everybody now i did see uh our lead mod here uh he's on the team now mr alex green shout out to him it's become official as of this morning when he put uh he pricked his finger and made of a mark of blood signed to no i'm not just kidding he's uh he's a part of our team we're excited to have him on he's incredibly helpful with so much stuff that he's done so far not only here i found out after i had invited him on board that he had all he was also part of the volunteer staff that helped me at uh, one of the last youtube channels i was uh, at with uh, crypto jeb so shout out to alex green um he did send me a message last time right as we were closing out and it was from dr death and i just wanted to I just want to shout out Dr. Death if he's in the chat because he did send a super chat. He said, when pulling a fib, would you pull it from, uh, you know, this?" he called out a specific low, 16K low to the 25K high or the most recent uh, moves? Well, we're going to go over, I'm going to do a whole video on fibs, but essentially with fibs, there's no one place that you uh, need to do a fib. You can do a fib. You could do multiple fibs. You know, I always talk about doing the macro midterm uh, micro sort of timeframes, having the larger the medium time frames and the very small time frames and so with that i like to have uh different charts set up to where i have more macro stuff in play and then i have a midterm chart and then i have a micro chart this is why sometimes uh on the stream i can't really do that uh, having multiple uh, i mean i can do it but it just it starts uh, getting confusing going between those different uh, different charts so uh, i have a lot of stuff on the chart this singular ch chart that i sh uh, share with you all uh it's good to have you know, understand where your macro uh, golden pocket is, absolutely. But uh, more specifically, when you're when you're looking for entries or exits or where things might bounce or pull back to, it's always good to look at that midterm and then micro, and then you determine you know the range, the time frame that you're in, and the range. Where's the local range? Uh, where's the local high in that range? Uh, and where's the local low? And those that's how you can kind of help determine. And uh, one of the things I like to do is go when I'm doing the fibs, I also have other things marked out like previous price action, uh, very key levels of support or uh, your your POC, your point of control that you have on your v VPVR, your volume profile, the visual range. And um, this way, you can kind of sometimes think you want to draw it from here, but then uh, if you choose the next candle to draw it from instead, you'll see that the golden pocket lines up more, per, or, or several of the fibs, the 382, the 786, they line up more uh, along the lines with where uh, price action levels are. And so that's the one that I would use in that case. But this is just talking semantics here. We want to get into the charts. We're going to break down a lot today. As I said, we're going to be going over a lot of charts. So please, again, hit that like button. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. There's over about 50% of you that tune in every day that are not members, but uh, you're tuning in regularly. Hit that subscribe button, be a part of our community. We have a wonderful community here at BitLab Academy. If you are watching over Hit Network, what's up to all you guys? How you doing? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, like and subscribe over there as well, but make sure you come and check out BitLab Academy. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and jump in to uh, everything here on the screen. So 
we got a lot of stuff we're going to look at today. Uh, and again, this is where you can come and follow us at BitLab Academy, which is youtube.com at BitLab Academy, uh, which is, of course, you can also see right here. Uh, we're coming in just uh, just about four and a half thousand uh, followers so far, subscribers. And this is within about a month's time of doing the live stream. So shout out to everybody. I'm going to go ahead and move my camera just a little bit. Shout out to everybody. There we go. Shout out to everybody that's been here from the start. If you've been here from the start, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, put hashtag from the start in there. If this is your first day, let us know. And again, let us know where you tuned in from. It's nice to build community here. And a uh, quick shout out to all the mods and chat. I got Alex Green, Alexander G, Mitch Shaw, Brad Guidel. Uh, let's see if, if my boy Matt C is in the house. Yeah, he's usually in here. If not, then he'll definitely be in here. Shout out also to Karen Swigart Harris, always in the house. Uh, King Peasant, always here. Uh, I mean, so many, so many names in here. Such a wonderful community. There's Matt C. What's up? Crimson Caravan Company. We've got so many great people in here. So shout out to all of you. DJ Lavish, what's up? Uh, and I believe uh, Mike Volmer was the first one. So uh, usually at the beginning of streams, uh, I, I like to incentivize people coming in to the beginning of streams and sticking through uh, because one, it, it's, uh, it helps you get the, the full range of information I'm trying to share. Some of the stuff you might not find exciting, that's okay. Uh, to learn how to navigate this market, you have to go through the different steps of understanding the different concepts and different points uh, within uh, within uh, trading, investing, concepts of technical analysis. And so this is all about bridging that gap from beginner to pro. So while I do get very technical uh, throughout the stream, I also like to throw that rope back and uh, uh, give uh, the beginners a chance as well. And sometimes I'll take a second to describe something. Maybe you already know. Well, be patient. The key to success in anything is being humble. So even if you think you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll start talking about something you think you know it, and then I'll actually bring up something or a different way to look at it that you hadn't heard before. So that's what this is all about. It's learning, growing, empowerment, community, and just straight up, uh, you know, mastering and dominating what's going on uh, within the crypto space. So let me know if there's any issues with any of the, uh, the audio, video, or anything, and we're gonna jump into this. So we got the screen up here. Now, before we just jump in, uh, I do want to bring up this right here. I have it muted good. Just take a look, take, take a look at this right here. Look at the value of Bitcoin as compared to these other assets, S&P 500, real estate, gold, US dollar, uh, Nigerian Nera, Turkish uh, Lira, Argentinian uh, Peso. And you can see how it relates in terms of holding its value. And if we're just using this as the uh, barometer here, we can see the value in terms of the correlation between these other assets, these other asset classes, and how they essentially uh, are losing value as compared to Bitcoin over you know the course since 2016 till now. So if that doesn't just uh, so if you have any questions about Bitcoin and crypto and, you know, especially Bitcoin, uh, this should sort of uh, put that to rest a little bit. It's good to remind yourself sometimes, especially after a long year of just straight down, uh, you know, downtrend, bearish, uh, bearish trend uh, that's just, you know, designed to FUD people out of the market, to make people fearful, to give their give their assets to somebody that has a longer term vision. Anytime you sell, you typically are selling, especially in the middle of a bear market, you're selling to somebody that has a longer term vision and large in part, those people, uh, you know, the people buying towards the middle and into bear markets tend to do better than people that buy near the, the middle or top of bull markets, because those people are buying hype. Whereas people buying in the middle or end of bear markets are buying data they're buying the knowledge looking at the fundamental developments and the the uh where it's going to be in the next bull run not worried about what it's doing right now in the bear market so i just wanted to shout that out now uh, uh uh, well, thank you. I just want to shout out Sean uh, Arsenault. Uh, I will say you and Frankie Candles are the best at articulating, ar articulating the terms. Thank you very much for that. I try to make sure the hardest thing about doing some of these streams and uh, trying to break it down is, uh, you know, we, we've had discussions about this uh, with, you know, many different analysts that I talk to, uh, whether it be on Twitter or, or YouTubers or whatever. It's, it's very hard to determine where the beginner point is because we've been doing this so long that we think we're breaking that something down to support and resistance and we're talking about a trend line and then 
we don't realize somebody doesn't know what a trend line is. And then we break down what a trend line is and they don't understand why that's relevant to price tag. So you always have to sort of throw it back and go a little bit further, break it down a little bit more simply than you expect so you can bring the beginners along. And you have to realize the reason why it pays to be humble, uh, especially in doing something like this where I'm streaming, trying to make sure I'm providing good value to everybody is this is also one of the tools that's going to help crypto ecosystem grow over the next you know grow into the next 15 20 30 years but the stronger we can make our base right now the more knowledge we can provide everybody that uh, you know as people enter the space if people have more knowledge they're more comfortable with the space if they understand the assets if they understand how to look at a chart and not be like well it, you know it looks like another language it's all about these sorts of uh, platforms you know like here at bitlab academy giving people the tools so they can they can navigate and understand what's going on. So let's go ahead and jump into the discussion today. We're talking about some price targets, some macro looks, where we're at from uh, uh, going through February into March, and we're gonna do a bunch of price targets. So I don't have a lot of uh, uh, charts and stuff here on Twitter, but we have some things we're gonna look at, and we're gonna be going through a lot of charts today. So this is Bitcoin, this is from Trader Tardigrade. Love this individual, uh, great, uh, great analyst. Uh, but this is on the two week chart. So this is a macro chart, of course. And we're seeing the Chand momentum oscillator here. We're seeing on balance volume and volume is one of the best indicators uh, to, to understand where interest is coming into the market and when, uh, when it's not. If price is moving up and volume is moving down, that means the market is not fully agreeing with that upward movement. And similarly, if, if volume is moving down, but price is moving up, it, we're near a bottom essentially uh, 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 and we start to see that switch as price is moving down and volume starts to move up that's showing that there's a uh, you know interest coming into the market so what we want to uh, notice here is these tops that we have outlined here with the down arrows and the the, the bottoms on these trends uh, marked by these gold arrows and we can see essentially this purple marking is essentially when the Chan momentum oscillator uh, the channel momentum oscillator has uh, basically broken this downtrend resistance and momentum has shifted back. Not only it's already shifted back to the upside back here and back here and back here, but this marking is a little bit past where this is. It, this is because we have a downtrend resistance and this could very have easily uh, been rejected and the price could continue falling. But this is saying the momentum across uh, multiple metrics is showing that the price action is moving to the upside. And there's agreement with that because we've broken uh, downtrend resistance. Excuse me. Now, the next thing we wanna look at here is not only is this breaking this, but we also see the volume is in a downtrend and flipping to the upside. The volume is uh, continuing to the upside and we have established not only that we've had a bottom, but price action is starting to uh, starting to attempt to move, it's consolidating and then starting to move away from that bottom. So we can see this is also uh, roughly where, uh, roughly where uh, these lines are, have marked where the start of, uh, in this case it was very endeavored, but a start of a bullish trend uh, really uh, coming, into, uh, coming into play. So now moving to the next chart here, we can see uh, this is a high, uh, basically dumb money and smart money, uh, which in, in a way we can also look at this on Bitcoin. This is for the traditional assets, but we can also look at this on Bitcoin, utilizing, utilize, utilizing on-chain metrics, understanding short-term holders versus long-term holders, long-term holders. Same thing I was just talking about before, where we're talking about long-term people having longer vision in the markets and they're buying at uh, price action lows on, uh, on macro trends and selling into the strength of a bull market. So whereas smart money is buying into the hype of a bull market and selling below their entry price because they're, they're, they're shaken out with the volatility that's in the market. And so similarly with uh, smart and dumb money confidence here with uh, traditional assets, we're seeing this sort of, Look at this, uh, dumb money buying into uh, a relief rally and smart money uh, basically accumulating. This is uh, basically uh, showing their confidence is coming up as price is going lower, meaning they're more willing, they're getting more confident to buy as price gets lower. And so we have seen a little bit of a, a local peak here on this. Now this doesn't mean it's over, but there is a strong correlation of some price action rolling over. Now, why are we looking at this? We're looking at this traditional asset. Well, uh, traditional asset metric is because everything is on a knife's edge right now with what's going on with market.
markets. Everything is everything is very uncertain as to what's happening. So we're looking very heavily as to where is uh, we're looking very heavily. We're looking very, we need to look very heavily as to what's happening with traditional assets right now because the uncertainty in the traditional asset classes is, is a great, great metric, is a great sort of lens as to understand where that risk on, risk off behavior is. And uh, no matter what your argument is, my dad tells me this all the time. He says, he goes, you know what you, I think all, all of our parents do this. Let's take a moment here. You know what you need to do? What do I, what do I need to do, dad? Well, you need to tell people, and he's not wrong here, but you need to tell people that Bitcoin should be something that's breaking away from the correlation of the stock market. And if we're having high inflation numbers and the stock market's tanking, people should be putting their money into Bitcoin and crypto. Well, in, in uh, many aspects in terms of the narrative of, of how Bitcoin could and should be, yes, that's a beautiful notion. I think it's idealistic at this point. And I think at some point in the future, uh, that will be the case. But as it stands right now, people that are trading this market, not just buying now and holding for the next 15 years, uh, I think people, there's still a lot of, there's a lot of volatility within Bitcoin. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of correlation that goes into this risk on risk off behavior, risk on meaning people investing into higher risk, uh, high risk assets, tech stocks, uh, Bitcoin, crypto, and the further down you go on the coin market cap, you know, Bitcoin being number one, because it has the largest market cap, uh, around 40, 42% of the entire market cap of uh, all crypto is Bitcoin by itself. So the other 26, or 28,000 coins that exist only make up 60% of the of the rest of the total market cap. So being that Bitcoin is still associated with being a risk asset, and we have a lot of institutional investors that are involved in, and more and more every day uh, in smart money, traditional smart money type investors that are, uh, you know, trading, investing, uh, you know, navigating for whatever their own goal, goals are within the crypto market, uh, the crypto ecosystem, then Anybody that's trading it has to be aware of this correlation between what's happening with the NASDAQ, Dow Jones, you know, also I look at the US 100 as well, uh, the dollar index, uh, and understanding this risk on, risk off sort of narrative, this, uh, this correlation, because it has a strong impact on what's happening with Bitcoin's price. Uh, as it stands right now. Now that will break away at some point, but you know, more specifically, if you don't even want to look at all those other things, you can, you can be, uh, my, you know, have myopic vision and, and look only at the assets you're looking at. I know, uh, uh, a trader that I've got a lot of respect for who does, uh, uh excellent, and uh, making some great calls uh, and even calling the, the downtrend in all of 2022 a, a month or two ahead of that and had targets that people called him crazy for. But he wasn't looking at the news narrative. He wasn't looking at inflation. He wasn't looking at risk on risk off. He was looking at the Bitcoin chart and looked at looked at how, you know, different signals that were that were going on. And from those alone and ignoring the bias all of us want to have that Bitcoin is going to go to a million dollars at some point in the future. We all get so locked into this idea that it's got to happen, you know, now that we always want it to go up and to the right, ignoring the multiple different charts that we need to look at. So, uh, and his name's Jesse Olson uh, and you can find, I'll actually pull him up for you and make sure you come and follow me over here at Kelly Kellum. You can see right here, uh, make sure you do the correct spelling. There's a lot of fakers out there. And of course, make sure you're following BitLab Academy, which is at Academy BitLab. And then, uh, Jesse Olson, the, uh, the, the, the resident sniper, I have him on my, uh, I have him on my podcast, very regular, uh, uh, I think I know his name. There we go. It's just individual right here. Come and give him a follow. He, uh, he, he does a lot of great charts on here and I'll, maybe I'll have him on, uh, maybe I'll have him on the stream here at some point. Um, but yeah, definitely check him out. Uh, but because some, you can look specifically just be a TA person, but you need to be a very well attuned TA person. If you're only going to use TA and sort of ignore the broader context, I want to make sure when we're doing these streams that I go through and I do talk about a number of the other things that are impact, especially, especially right now where uh, we are in the midst of basically trying to determine, trying to determine if whether or not we are somewhere right here, trying to break out, or if we're somewhere right here, uh, uh, I don't know if you could see that. I'm going to go ahead and, okay. 
Uh, we're trying to determine if we're somewhere right here looking to break out or if we're somewhere right here looking for a pullback. This is over here on the bottom left if you're not seeing where I'm looking. So are we at the disbelief stage or are we still at a little bit of an accumulation stage? Another way of looking at this is this chart right here. Uh, you know, you can look at either side of this. These are the same, these are the same things, just the start of a bull run. Uh, the end of a bear market and then the start of a bull run. So this is equal to this. So are we right here trying to confirm we're going to continue or are we uh, somewhere uh, somewhere in this zone, you know, in this zone looking for another retest to the downside? That's what we're trying to determine. And so utilizing the broader context of the market and looking at what's going on gives us uh, some some sort of leading sort of understanding about why the market's moving in the ways it is doing and it's pushing up and pulling back. We're having all this economic news that's coming out that's having a little bit more impact on the markets right now. The normal, I think, you know, with just a Fed chair talking, not even a decision, they're just talking and then it impacts the price. And then the PCE data comes out 0.1% the one way or the other, and it has dramatic impact on the price. It's because we have not defined the trend. And ever, you know, I'm sure you've heard it on other, I'm sure you've heard it on other um, uh, platforms, other YouTubers, other analysts before. The trend is a friend until it ends. Well, the problem with this statement is everybody's trying to define that we're already in a trend but we haven't we're in this accumulation zone uh down here at the end of a trend and so being that we are in this look at this chop we are in this chop that really is designed to shake out okay we're gonna go bearish push now we're gonna get a bullish impulse let's see okay the bear the, 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 the when we get back to this level when we get to this level which is this previous uh previous low right here we get a rejection now there's a bearish attempt here and we get to see the strength of the bulls now the the bulls come in here. Now let's let's test the resolve of the bulls again. Okay, let's and we're getting this bearish and bullish pull, push and pull to see who's going to get exhausted first. This is what these accumulation zones are about, similar to distribution zones that we have at the top of market cycle trends. And of course, as I always say, we always want to consider at least three market cycles. You want to consider your macro, your midterm, and your micro, meaning let's say your month or, or two week or weekly, and then your three day daily 12 hour for your midterm, and then your four hour and everything below for your micro, depending on what your strategy is. So coming on, uh, moving on here, uh, you know, we are still historically primed to go into a bull trend, but we also have different market context about everything that's going on with the market and the world and the economy. So we have to take note of that. Now, moving on to, uh, uh, we've talked about the, the th this, so these two are at, at odds now because we see that we very likely could be going into an uptrend, but we also see that traditional assets have this uh, smart money sort of peak uh, and a little bit of a rollover. So are we going to hold now, uh, let's get into, uh, yeah. And just before we go on, make sure you come over here and sign up for the newsletter. I did not put out a newsletter this last week because I am working my fingers to the bone to make sure all of the content can go out as soon as possible for the new, uh, basically all new BitLab Academy. It's all new content. We're going to have the legacy stuff, the old stuff, the 1.0 stuff is still going to be available, but we're bringing, I mean, all new, uh, candles, candle patterns, technical analysis, uh, all wrapped into that uh, chart patterns, um, uh, indicators, uh, psychology of trading, trading fundamentals. Uh, there's so much coming, uh, and we're we're just we're right there. We're moving all the stuff over to the servers. We're just proofing it all and trying to make sure we don't have any issues with the membership. But make sure you sign up for this because you get a free, you get a free, uh, you get you get sign up for the free newsletter, but you also get access to free month access to the courses and indicators. You get entered to win that. Um, and you also can come over here to find uh, the indicators that we go through on the charts regularly right here over bitlabacademy.com forward slash indicators. Now, what we wanna look at, here we are. So first thing we wanna look at here is a long-term holder realized price. Now, as we can see, this is an on-chain metric. You can come over here to looknode.com. There's no sponsorship here with them. I just, I think they're a great site, uh, great site, very affordable. Uh, and have, uh, I think they have a lot of stuff on here that they've made free as well. So check it out. Uh, we can see here, this is essentially, the long-term holder realized price is essentially all coins that have been hold, uh, uh, that were held for longer than 155 days the last time they moved, okay? And so we can see, it's the average price of every coin that was held for longer than 155 days Average and what the, what that price is, and this is proven to be a great 
when price gets under this level has been excellent zones of accumulation. We see this here, we see it again all through here. We see this right here, mark the whole bottom in accumulation zone. We see the March 2020 uh, global economic shutdown. We see that the price, uh, you know, barely basically touched it, bounced off of this. Now we see we held above this, and I've shown this chart before, but I just want to make sure anybody new here understands this. This is a sort of critical, it's going to give us a critical level we should be watching right now. Price didn't break through this, and we're going to zoom in now, now that we understand what it is, and we see how valuable it's been. We didn't really, we kind of broke through it here, but we got a rejection right here, which is essentially the FTX crash, which was uh, November 4, 5, 6, or around the, right after the, mid, the, the, the elections here uh, in the U.S., FTX crash. This was that zone right here. And this historically has proven to be excellent accumulation zones. This doesn't mean it always has to be the case. It just means it has been in the past. Now, we have broken above this. Now, what I want you to notice here, we're going to zoom in a bit further. What I want you to notice here is this price right below us is what, what is the price of the LTH realized price? LTH being the long-term holder realized price. We can see that we broke above this, found some support, kind of tried to test it, but still uh, made another move up. But we can see this price is what? 19,927. Now, why is this important? I have to sneeze. Whew. Okay, I muted it so you didn't hear me. Sorry about that. Just so excited about the charts here today. So we see this 19,927. Uh, 19, this is right about that level that I've been talking about. And I didn't even notice this until to, to this morning when I was kind of doing a bunch of TA to see what I wanted to share today. This long-term holder realized price is right at the level of where the CME, uh, the, the CME futures, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin CME futures gap is right at $19,900. So we have some confluence here. Now let's go ahead and look at this next chart. Now we're looking at the short-term holder realized price. Now what I want you to notice here, this is going to give us uh, a pretty good signal. This is a uh, important, thank you for the blessings, uh, Karen uh, uh, Quicker, uh, Quiker Quicker uh, and uh, Mr. Alex Green. Shout out to everybody in chat also. I really appreciate everybody being here. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Join our community. We got a great community here. We break things down and also go through a lot of uh, data. So we could see that anytime price action breaks above the short-term holder realized price. Now, this is similarly to the long-term holders. This is all coins that have been bought uh, within the last, uh, basically bought and sold within the last 155 days. And we can see that basically it's people with a lot uh, less convictions, tends to be retail and traders, um, a lot of retail hype buyers, uh, and then people that are just active traders. And we can see when price action breaks above this level, and we find support, this has acted as a pretty good support level all the way to the trend cycle top. And then as price action breaks below it, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it an accumulation zone. I'd use a long-term holder price for that. But if we look as uh, Bitcoin has matured, now we can we can look a little bit more clearly as to how price has responded. Once we break below this, resistance, uh, resistance, 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 uh, we get a little fake out here. And then the whole trend has been support all the way to the top. Now, similarly, break below it, resistance, the full, full bear market. We touch this again and we uh, capitulate. Now we break above it. Uh, bull trend we break below it bear trend bull trend now what uh, the reason i want to bring this up is because now we understand where the cme of futures gap is below us nineteen thousand nine hundred dollars but we also can look right here look at where the short-term holder realized price is nineteen thousand seven hundred dollars this is for bitcoin of course now the reason why this is important is because as i've mentioned on the charts price can pull back and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bearish indication but there's certain key levels that we need to pay attention to where price uh, interacts with and how does it interact? Is there any sort of uh, is there any sort of shift in momentum at play on you know, if you're looking at the four hour, if you go down to the one hour when we're approaching those levels, does it look like momentum is increasing into those levels or does it look like we're starting to get a lack uh, basically uh, divergences uh, building into those levels? Does it look like there's momentum starting to shift to soften at those levels? These are things we need to pay attention to uh, and we need to uh, uh, yeah, I don't need glass no today. So what we want to do now is we're going to look at just a little bit of uh, what's going on here uh, with uh, Dixie stock market. We already see, and I want you to notice here, we have this uh, massive sort of trend line uh, that uh, 
it's a, kind of an obscure trend line because we have these touch points. We broke through it, but we do have uh, some interaction here, re rejection here. And now we're finding support on this here, uh, right? Uh, but what I want you to notice is we also have this sort of descending wedge. We can actually extend this. We have this descending wedge. Now, if, if the NASDAQ loses this level, uh, which is down here at uh, essentially... Uh, Oh, okay. I've the, I've the the wrong Nasdaq chart up. But if we lose this level, uh, this isn't the actual. Uh, yeah, if we if we lose this level uh, right about uh, you know the fifty five seventy level, then we stand to uh, potentially have a larger drop. Now this is going to be important because it's going to take more risk out of the market and probably put bearish pressure on Bitcoin. Uh, similarly, uh, we have this W formation here on the US one hundred. Uh, we did break above it. Uh, we tried to test this we broke now it looks like if we come down here this is a three day if we come down here on the four hour it looks like not only did we break it we've kind of retested it and are coming back down so there is a bit of a bearish narrative about what is happening here similarly with nasdaq now the dollar index as well this is dollar index when when this is going up when this is going up this is indicating that there's liquidity coming out there's basically risk coming out of markets it's going into the dollar okay and so this is also a bearish sort of push onto markets if this were to continue back to the upside now on the uh, the flip side of that there is sort of uh there is a there is a bullish uh, sort of uh, set up here though, because we do have this, if we can look right here, we have a inverse head and shoulders, or we have a head and shoulders, which we have a shoulder, large head, then we have another shoulder here. And in order to figure out where, what this means as in terms of where the, where this asset uh, class may go to is you essentially, you, uh, come here to the top of the head, do option T or alt T. If you're on uh, PC, that gives you a trend line. And then you can just click and you go from the, essentially the high of this zone, which is basically this wick here down to this neckline. And then you come over here and you basically mark it from the neckline down. Now, if this were to get rejected here as a, it's struggling to right now it's looking like there's an opportunity for dixie to come down the dollar index to come down to about you know which is roughly uh you know uh, a little under one percent to the downside this would put a lot of confidence and risk back this would show that a lot of confidence and risk is coming back into markets so that's something that we want to pay attention to if this does retake this level and continue to the upside then we need to really evaluate what we think what we think is going to happen with markets uh, because this is showing that risk risk off behavior is is in play. Now let's jump in. We've got quite a bit of time to do quite a bit of charts, so let's jump in. Uh, let me know what uh, you know over the last three days. You know I haven't seen you all since uh, Friday last week. Let me know what. Let me know what uh, what coins you've been DCAing into. Have you gotten out of anything? Are you protecting yourself? Let me know what you're doing in chat here. If you're watching this later, let me know down below. I like to pay attention to what different coins people are interested in, what they're trading, what they you know uh, you know what they're what they have their eyes on. This way, all of us can share into you know the knowledge that we all have, and we can all make sure we're looking at something. I, I, if I see a lot of people talking about it in the chat, then it's uh, you know projects that I may be uh, be doing stuff. Um, Kelly pulled some fib uh, multiple times which is what my question was i i do multiple fibs based on the different uh, this is from dr death kelly pulled some fibs multiple times which is uh what my question was uh yeah so yeah and I'll, I'll draw some more fibs the key is to do your macro midterm and shorter time frame fibs that gives you different levels for different targets based on the time frame that you're uh looking for moves in that that's kind of the answer to that question now coming uh we do need to look actually really quick uh, at uh, some dominant stuff. We see, if we come over here to uh, the monthly, we can see that uh, we are forming, a. I mean, we're still within this channel on, on uh, the Bitcoin dominance. Uh, and this kind of shows the behavior as, as Bitcoin is performing as compared to the rest of the other uh, coins in the market. And if this is going up, all coins are suffering. If this is coming down, all coins are ripping in relationship to the price action of Bitcoin. So uh, if we come back down to the daily, we see we are struggling here. We do have a cup and handle, which is a bullish structure uh, right here. Uh, and you know, on this, if this were to break out to the upside, then we could kind of go like this. Uh, and I don't necessarily think this will be in play. Uh, I, I do think I do think altcoins will have uh, a stronger push 
in the right conditions. But this would uh, I'm going to do it more conservatively from the handle breakout rather than from the neckline, uh, just to give me a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of conser conservative sort of push, but this is this very likely could push up to 45%. Uh, so this would have downward pressure on uh, altcoins if that were to take place. Now, this is the main thing we need to look at before we look at the rest of the charts. We have this chart and I've showed you all a number of times here. This is a USDT dominance. This is, think of it this way again. I'm going to say it again. You have to hear it over and over to, look, to really make sure you are looking at these things. Looking at this chart gives you a direct idea, a direct correlation as to are people moving out of crypto, which would essentially be people are still staying in crypto, but are they stay, are they moving out of their positions in Bitcoin and altcoins? Are they moving out in into their dry powder, which would send this higher because they're coming out of their assets, which would lower the percentage of those coins being held across all the total market. Uh, and they're moving into stable coins, which would send the dominance up. So if this is moving up, it means that people are moving out of their positions that they're holding in other cryptos. If this breaks down, similarly similarly to the dollar index, this is a more direct relationship to crypto. If this if this breaks down, if this gets rejection at this this trend line that we have right here, if this breaks down, then this will bring this will show liquidity is pouring back from stable coins back into positions within the crypto market. So we want to keep an eye on this because this is an inherently bullish structure looking at just this, uh, looking at just this descending wedge we have right here. Um, however, we also have a very ugly, this is, this is why the market is so hard to trade when we're looking at this sort of zone right here, because looking at this chart shows us that we are an inherently, uh, 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 bullish structure because this is a descending wedge. However, this is a descending wedge uh, marked out w while we also have a head and shoulders within that wedge, which is a bearish structure. So you can see it's not only you that's confused. The market is showing conflicting signals on multiple time frames across multiple uh, asset classes that have direct impact on what's happening. And we can see the confusion specifically in these charts. So we want to see, does this break to the upside uh, and show that this was uh, more over the bullish narrative is coming, uh, the bearish narrative for markets is coming into play, showing that the uh, the strength of the uh, dominance of stable coins, the dry powder, people coming out of positions, or is this going to uh, break down and show that the bullishness of the market is coming into play because people want to get back into their positions. That is what we're trying to determine right now. And so now let's jump into these charts. But before we do that, everybody, if you have not hit that like button, if you are not subscribed to this channel, what are you doing? I'm spending all this energy sharing the years of experience that I have. If you're watching any channel, doesn't matter who it is, me, Crypto Banter, BitBoy, Frankie Candles, investing, Investor Bros, Crypto Jeb, I don't care who you watch, Jason Casper, Tom Crown, if you're watching something, do the favor, do the, the easiest thing you can do to help crypto ecosystem grow, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, ding the bell, especially subscribe if you enjoy what's going on because it, it, it definitely helps everything that's, that's happened on the, on the channel. So we're going to go ahead and jump into these charts now. We're going we're gonna, to uh, try to run through as many charts as we can. So we've done a lot of Bitcoin, so I'll spend a little bit less time on Bitcoin, but what we, need, we need to understand what's going on. So let's look at the uh, monthly here. These uh, yellow lines that we have on the chart, this is, this is specifically, I'm going to delete this one. This is specifically roughly about uh, it's probably going to be actually somewhere closer to, it's, uh, it has to be on, in uh, and, and sometime in, in April will be, sometime in April will be the, uh, April 2024 will be the having, And so we want to see, is this going to happen, this push up? pull back and then push up? Uh, what What's the price action going to be between now and then? So what we want to do is we can see, I'm looking at the Heikinashi candle chart for this. And the specific reason why we have traditional uh, traditional candles here, and if we look at this uh, this chart, I'm going to double click on this to minimize. There we go to minimize those other indicators. Uh, looking at these charts, we can see we have a large momentum candle. This is a monthly chart, of course, on Bitcoin. Um, large momentum candle and then a doji candle, which would kind of show a likely reversal. So this is, uh, uh, or at least a pullback. Now, th so this is something that we need to pay attention to. However, when you look at the Heikinashi candle chart, and if you don't see these two up here, when you click on whatever candles you have, you can just click this little arrow and, uh, you know, come over here, put a star next to this, and then you have both options right up here uh, in the top. Now, looking at the Heikinashi candles, 
what this provides us is a look at the average sort of volume traded, the average, the average interest in that time frame, where where the price action had the most interest. So you get a better sort of view of not just, not just uh, like you do on this, not just. The open, which is the bottom of the candle, the close, which is the top of a candle that's green. And then you see, you can see these little wicks. This is how far price traveled. And then the bears took it back. And down here, uh, these wicks on the bottom of candles, how far, how far the bears tried to take it. And then the bulls took it back. So open, close or open, close. And then how far is price has traveled? When we're looking at Heikinashi candles, we're seeing, we're seeing, uh, also the open and the close, but the, the candle itself is looking more at the average interest in the volume uh, and where things were traded during the life of that candle. So you're getting a more relative look at uh, the, uh, the average sort of weight within that uh, within that candle. So when we look at this, we see this sort of reversal candle. And, and in addition to that, we're also seeing a trend. You see a clear trend, you know, uptrend, downtrend. Uh, uptrend downtrend now we see this flipped on the monthly to green trend uh we do we did have a sort of reversal candle here and we're seeing a lot of strength on this on this candle so even within these these two different candle patterns that we're looking between the traditional candles and the haikanashi we're seeing a little bit of a lot uh uh sort of uh uh not indifference there's uh, uh a different look, a, a disagreement as well, a uncertainty between, uh, you know, a disagreement between the two different things. So there's, this is what we need to pay attention to. So when we're looking at this monthly, if we, we're going to come over here and look at just some traditional assets, uh, sorry, some traditional indicators. Now I'm going to minimize this and we can see on the monthly, this is excellent. We can see, I can double click on this. We can see that the MACD uh, is looking to roll over on the monthly, which is incredibly incredibly strong uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, strength of trends. We're seeing the momentum is starting to shift to the upside. Uh, we see the RSI, uh, you know, pulled all the way back down to 37 and is now sort of coming up to this 50 zone that we have right here. Uh, and, and we want to see at this level, option J gives a uh, option J or alt J on PC. Uh, option is for Mac gives you option J gives you a horizontal ray from that location forward. And we can see, we want to see right here as price, uh, as the strength pushes up, does this get rejected at the 50 zone or make it back above it, which would basically show that the strength has come back into the market. Now, the mo more important than both of these, what I can see as a more direct signal is this uh, the stochastics here, not stochastic RSI, but I like to use st stochastics specifically, has turned up and it turned up, if we double click on this, uh, come over here, came up, it broke, basically broke uh, right between December and January. And we can see that this is, this, basically called signaled also right as uh, this bottom and then breaking up also signaled right as we we're breaking to the upside so these are fully reset on the bottom which gives us plenty of room to run if we were to run now we still have all eyes on the rsi here if we get rejected at the uh 50 51 uh 50 level mark now we're going to look at really quick the uh the uh, bitlab trading stack here and we can see that we you know saw this reversal upside with the, the three bullish divergences we have this level that we are looking at in terms of a top we do still have a, a, a blue floor right here on the uh significant movement which signifies that those macd's that the uh, stochastics that the rsi uh, are at levels that are showing that we're at a likely trend uh on this time frame trend cycle bottom but we're going to look down now at the three day and just kind of get a better uh, somewhat uh, smaller view uh more zoomed in view as to what's going on now we're seeing attempts to the downside uh here and when we when we see this wick do you see what i mean when i'm talking about the wick on this candle i'm going to hide all the uh lines on this candle we have a bearish attempt all the way down to here and the bulls had all the interest push all the way back up here uh further uh for, further further down so we have a long wick and now this candle we're seeing this sort of roundabout so this is trying to continue up and retest that 25 three level that we continue talking about so what we want to do to project where this likely could go i'm going to double click on the chart here now what we want to do is uh take it from this level right about right here option f uh 
you know what? We're going to go to an absolutely clean chart. I'm going to go, let's go here. Okay. Now we're going to go to, here we go. So now what we want to do is we want to go, uh, we're going to go option F from here. This gives us a fib. Now we can see the 1.618. The 1.618 puts us all the way up at uh, 41,711. So this move very well could be uh, this this move, this range that we've once we break above this golden pocket. And then remember, when we're looking, when we're looking at uh, all the price action. We have this huge gap right here, which is basically 25,000 all the way to 30,000. So what I'm looking for into March, if we're able to hold this level, I'm looking at breaking, uh, I'm looking at breaking uh, up to uh, at minimum, uh, you know, testing this sort of mid range here where this sort of uh, node is, we can see right here, all this price in interest right here is testing this level. And if we're able to clear this level, uh, uh, I don't think we're going to get up to 41,711 in March. Uh, so what my target would be for March is by taking this high to this low, we have the 1.618. Uh, this would be a, a, a little bit longer period going into Q2 uh, would be my target. But I'm looking for a range uh, in March of us testing this. If we do get some sort of test down, uh, coming back up uh, and clearing this level and testing this level uh, up to roughly about uh, 29 to $32,000, that's where I'm looking for the end of March uh, to be. If we get a lot of bearishness, uh, a lot of bearishness, we need to plan the opposite direction. Uh, so this would be my bullish case. If we do lose this level and we come down, uh, we, then we need to, uh, of course, take, take account of the price action uh, trend line that we have. Option T, nope, option T coming from here all the way down, you know, essentially here, uh, and we have that gap, uh, you know, coming in down to the, uh, the, uh, the bearish sort of 19,000, the bearish 19,000 uh, sort of range, uh, 19,900. So now we can do from there to there, and we can see that, so look at this, the golden pocket right here, zooming in, the golden pocket on this 19,788 uh, on the pullback would put us uh, roughly retesting this uh, support again, also closing that CME gap. So if we do have bearishness come into play, I am looking uh, to close out this level. And if we if we lose this level, uh, then we're going to have to revisit what our levels are uh, below that. But I'm, I'm, I'm inherently a little more bullish uh, about what's going to happen. So I'm looking at the, the $29,000 to $32,000 uh, by the end of uh, March as a poss possibility. And if not, if we are fighting this range, we very well could uh, come down and clear this range uh, down here at $19,700 and then sort of work our way uh, sl more slowly back up uh, 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 towards the end of March trying to uh, fight that $25,000 range again. That's what I'm seeing there. Now, when we do Ethereum, we need to, uh, we're going to clear, okay, go to auto, we're on the daily so we're gonna kind of hide. Okay, so we're getting a, a bullish, we're getting a bullish flag here, which is bullish divergence right on that volume node. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So with this zone here, I'm looking at two options. Uh, if we do have bearishness come in, I'm looking uh, at the 13,088 level uh, for a pullback, but we're gonna look at that inherent uh, bullish sort of nature. Uh, option F, we're going to come here to the bottom. And so I'm looking at, uh, man, that would be a pretty high target if we were to do that. Uh, I'm looking at option J. I'm looking at a level that would be, uh, if we break this level, this is, this is a little bit ugly on, I'm going to delete, I'm going to delete a bunch of these fibs so we can see what's going on here. So, man. So we see here on the daily, we're getting a, the, the relative extrema is sticking out to the downside. This is like a slingshot pulling back, trying to push to the upside. Uh, we're having a bit of trouble here, but I can already tell you, this is probably like, I can already tell you, this is probably already, this is probably coming at that 0.5 sort of fib. Option F, option F. 
we can see right there. So this goes right into the 0.5 it's sitting at, but it, it rejected at this golden pocket. So there is some bearishness coming in right now on Ethereum, on Ethereum. However, we are also seeing bullishness right now, right here. So we have to really plan both directions because there's such uncertainty in the markets. So if this were to continue back to the downside, because we did get rejected on the small zone here at the golden pocket, if this were to come back to the downside, then what we do is we go from this low, option F, we come to this level high, and we see that this uh, golden pocket is sitting essentially right above this price action shelf, uh, but we also have a lot of uh, price action. We can see option J gives us this horizontal line, which is right also in where this golden pocket is, but the, the volume node is uh, below that. Uh, let's see if this volume node fills out. Okay, the volume node fills out a little bit. So volume shows us where the interest is in price. So if we do lose this level, and there's bearishness that comes into the to the market. Uh, there's a I, I can see price action coming down, testing this level here, and then coming down and testing this zone right here, which is about the thirteen thousand eighty three level. If we lose that zone, uh, then uh, then. Uh, I think we're going to be, there's going to be a further downside uh, that we're going to be looking at in the markets, but we'll be talking about this every day. So it's okay. So this is the target that I'm looking at below us. Uh, if we're not able to hold this sort of low right here, which is the 15,070 level. Uh, so I'm looking at the 13, basically 1400 uh, to 1370 level as a pullback here uh, for still a potential bullish push up uh, to, to, uh, to go up and test 2176. But on the bullish note, I'm looking for 2176 uh as uh as uh, a sort of lower target uh as a lower target for the end of march uh but if we're looking more inherently bullish then i'm looking at a, a target uh let's go ahead and do this full move option f coming down then i'm looking at a target around 2500 dollars, which is also this level this level right here and it's also from this high to this low, which is this range, the golden pocket is right here, the 25, 25 to $600 range. That's what I'm seeing for Ethereum. So now uh, that's, you know, the bu bullish case if we don't get this pullback here, which would be to the $1,400 region. Now we wanna do uh, BNB, which we have not done yet, uh, I don't think on this channel. So let's look at this, let's do, we're gonna see, we're just gonna do this quickly uh, so we can do a bunch of charts. We're gonna do this sort of range that we broke down from to the bottom. Uh, so we got a rejection here. We're trying to attempt to get higher. If we're able to clear this level, if we're able to clear, where's my, let me move this right here. If we're able to clear this level right here, which is the uh, previous high on these two moves, uh, and this, I can already tell you by looking at this, that this is probably the golden pocket from this move. So yeah, we're, we're fighting in that region right now. So we're looking to clear, this is a local high that we need to break. This is the local high we need to break past right here. We do have a large candle wick, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing this more specifically on the candle closes here on this daily. This golden pocket, if we're able to, if we're able to get back up, we have a lot of volume interest right here. If we're able to get back up above this and there's not more FUD on Binance, on uh, BNB, uh, then uh, I'm seeing that we are going to, that we can likely test. Now let's go ahead and look at the other indicators uh, just to get a view on some of the, the data that we're seeing here. Uh, okay, we are seeing some bullishness come in here with these candles to the downside on the relative extrema. However, the problem with this this is choppiness again. A little bit of bullishness, but we're also seeing a local trend top. That's what this. That's what the reds are. This is showing that the momentum indicator is a combination of stochastics, uh, momentum, uh, RSI, uh, MACD. Uh, these momentum indicators are showing that they're getting a bit overheated, but we're seeing bullishness here. So this is a case. This is this is not a clear signal with this, and we're also in a bit of a downtrend here uh, on uh, BNB coin. Looking here at the daily, so. We are right at this point of control. If we're able to break through this zone, then we need to, we, the next step up would be this three, 360 level. If we're able to take 360, then I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing, uh, you know, 
testing up to 460 shouldn't be as difficult. If we're able to break 360, another $100 up to this previous high, I'm going to be more conservative with BNB because of the FUD that's going around about it and everything going on with Paxos and this, you know, this new sort of issue with uh, Coinbase, I think yesterday, delisting BUSD uh, uh, on their on their exchange uh, and being able to hold it and trade it and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to look for a target probably somewhere in the $400 range conservatively, but I am seeing also the possibility that this could this could trade lower. The problem with Binance, the, the Binance coin, is that it's such a big part of you know, uh, you know, the narrative of Binance and Binance is such a big part of the narrative of the crypto ecosystem. So if Binance is uh, really suffering, then that also could uh, potentially bring some bearish narrative into uh, other the rest of the crypto ecosystem. So we need to closely watch this as it happens. But we are seeing, uh, you know, this attempt lower. Uh, this attempt down, this attempt lower, and then almost like a very wonky, not inverse head and shoulders, but kind of an attempt on that. So there is some bullishness coming into this. Uh, we can actually go on a smaller time frame and look, okay, we do have bullish, look at this. We have bullish uh, divergence on the hidden volume here and bullish relative extrema. This is sticking out, <coughs> excuse me. We do have we do have uh, uh, over overheated level here, but we are seeing some bullishness come into this. This is an inverse head and shoulders. So if this were to break out, I'd be looking at uh, potentially a target on this uh, uh, up to up to even up to probably 330. So if we're able to do this, uh, if we're able to do this, then um, then then I'd, I'd be more confident in reta retaking this 360 level and then uh, potentially getting back up uh, over 400. Man, excuse me. Throat's tickling. Uh, now we want to do, uh, we did XRP the other day, uh, but let's do it again. Um, uh, we're going to do it really quickly. We're just going to revisit it. Uh, actually, I can just type it in. XRP, XRP, USDT. So, okay, man. So uh, this is looking a little more bearish. We have uh, this uh, coming down, but if we look at the, if we look at that, that was the, the four hour looking at the daily we're having some bearish bullishness come in here with these sticking to the downside uh this had a blue signal showing a bit of a floor but that's since rolled over we have a downtrend we have a downtrend uh coming here uh i'm looking to retest this zone right here at the 38 cents level uh for uh you know but if we do have bullishness come in and as we get closer into the summer uh, and there's more news, hopefully positive news about the XRP case coming in. Uh, we very well could see some higher, uh, uh, some uh, speculative sort of accumulation as we people trying to front run the decision that comes in there with uh, with XRP. So now we could see what am I seeing here? Okay, so we need to get back above this volume node first thing, and then uh, on a bullish sort of case, we're looking at this zone here, option F from from this high I'm doing right here down to the low, uh, and we can see that we've already rejected at this golden pocket right here. We're gonna go to auto. We've already rejected this golden pocket. Uh, so we need to break this level and reclaim 42 cents. And once we claim, reclaim 42 cents, uh, I think the momentum's gonna be in our favor. So we'll be looking at 50 cents, and then option F from this uh, option, I'm gonna move this to there, from this zone all the way to the bottom. Then we are going to be looking at, uh, uh, we're going to delete this zone right here. So yeah, we're looking at, uh, you know, going as high and testing. It'd be nice to test 60 cents. If we get bullishness coming back into the market, uh, testing 60 cents uh, sometime end of March, uh, middle of April. And again, this is if uh, we don't have uh, the markets rolling over because of the traditional assets. If that were to be the case, then we need to look at the potentiality of this going to the downside, in which case uh, we very well could come down and test uh, the 34 cent level, which we can see right here, the golden pocket. And if we lose this level, I'm thinking, th I'm thinking that there's a lot more bearishness coming into the market. And so we very likely could come down and retest these lows at the 32 cents. Uh, you know, and, and come down because we have this massive sort of head and shoulders that's within XRP as well. Uh, so this, XRP is something you want to keep your eye on uh, for sure. Um, 
Let me do AVAX real quick because I haven't done that lately. Uh, so we have a double top right here. Man, the things are looking bearish when we're looking at, you see how there's some potential bullishness in Bitcoin, but we're seeing some bearishness in these other altcoins. That was also reflected when we we're looking at uh, the, the dominance of Bitcoin coming up while uh, the total market cap, excluding Bitcoin, uh, you know, looking at the alts was looking a little bit more, more bearish. So we do have a double top here. So coming from this move here, option F coming for the top to the bottom, uh, we got rejected. Look at this, right? These golden pockets are everything. I want you to use these golden pockets. Come over here, use your Fibonacci uh, area right here. Go to Fib Retracement, put a star on it. Uh, if it's only one starred, then that's what's going to be on your toolbar here. And you can also use the, the star uh, indication right down here on the bottom of the chart. And this brings up the toolbar of everything you've starred. Uh, so we have this golden pocket from this range high to this range low. Uh, we can actually adjust this a little bit. And so what I'm looking at here on uh, on AVAX, let me double click in, coming back down. Now we have this, we see this sort of retracement to the upside. Now from this low, we can do option F and we can do a retracement back from a bullish push back to the downside. And so I could see, uh, I could see AVAX coming back down to this 14 cent range uh, sorry, 14 cents. That would be ridiculous. $14 range, uh, because this is also in line with where this previous price action top is right here. Uh, and so, uh, if we kind of draw this, uh, so testing back down into this zone right here, uh, I'd want to hold above this cause we are having, we have a lot of volume above this. So if we have inherent bullishness, this is how you can see what's going on in the charts. If we have an inherent bullishness in the charts, as this pulls back, we can see that we have a high volume. I'm going to shrink this. We can see that we have a high volume node uh, uh, right about where we're at. If we lose this level and we're able to hold, if we're able to hold this golden pocket right here and then bounce off with conviction, then this be, this would be in line also with Bitcoin pulling back, closing that CME gap. Uh, you know, even this pu pushing back a little further down to this 786 wouldn't be so bad to 13 cents. So you're gonna wanna keep an eye on everything going on in the charts. When we, if we do get that pullback to close that CME gap, looking into where we're going into the future, uh, in uh, looking to where we're going into March, uh, we do have, remember just, uh, you know, to just to remind you on Bitcoin, uh, I'm gonna come back over here, coming over to this chart. If we go to the weekly chart, we can see on these uh, traditional sort of, uh, uh, where is it at? Monthly, actually. We can see that the, the MACD is starting to roll over. The RSI is trying to break, you know, to the upside. If we actually zoom in on this, this will uh, be one of the last things we can look at. Option T, we can see that uh, on this sort of trend line, if we zoom out on it, uh, we have broken out of this uh, this zone. We're trying to test, get it back above 50, and we can see that the the we can see that the MACD, the momentum starting to roll over and that there is a bullish case. There are signals that there's a bullish case, but don't be blind. Make sure you're watching what's happening with the Dixie. And look at this. This is a good sign. We're rejecting here. We want to see this reject and also break below this low right here and continue down. We want to see NASDAQ find some support and go up. And we want to see what is happening right here? Uh, we want to see what is happening with the USDT dominance. We want a little bit of a rejection here and coming down. And that's what we want. So we know if we're getting a bullish push up to that, you know, 30, 29 to 32K level for Bitcoin and, uh, you know, watching the alts as well, if they're going to follow, or if they're going to suffer as people uh, basically rotate their, their funds into Bitcoin to take advantage of that move. And in which case, if they do, once it gets to that level, you can bet you can rest assured that there will be a lot of profit taking once we get to that macro resistance level. It used to be macro support at that 30k range, and then a lot of there's likely there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, reshuffling of funds into altcoins. So you need to pay attention to your to your targets. You need to pay attention to your uh, different charts. And with that, that's all I got. Big love to everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. If you're not a part of the channel, hit the like button on the way out. Ding the bell. Again, my name is Kelly Kellum. Thank you for being here. Uh, make sure you go and check out bitlabacademy.com. All the updates are coming as soon as we can get them out. We're moving all the content. It's, it's 100 plus, many, many, many gigs of, uh, of content. We're rolling over the new servers, getting it integrated to the new website. It's a brand new BitLab Academy coming. Uh, I mean, as soon as we, it's it's right there at that edge of, of, of happening. So everybody that gets in now before 
the updates come out will have advantage of the current price because once the new updates come out the prices will be going up so make sure you check out bitlabacademy.com again hope you all have a wonderful day hope you have a wonderful week as well and with that i will see you later adios muchachos thank you for coming hope to see you again and again adios muchachos thank you for coming thank you for being my friend